Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at the new Safari 5. This episode of MacMost Now is brought to you by Gazelle.com. Gazelle is the easiest, fastest way for you to sell or recycle your gadgets. Every item gets an offer and you get paid to be environmentally responsible. Use promo code MACMOST for a 5% bonus. So in conjunction with the Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple released a new version of Safari on Monday. You can get it by using Software Update on your Mac. Let's take a look at what features are new. First we've got performance enhancements. Most notably we have a 25% increase in how fast code on a web page, JavaScript, executes. So this will speed up a lot of web pages. In addition to that we've got something called DNS prefetching. This means that when you load up a page, Safari is going to look at all the links on the page and figure out where all those are located. So instead of waiting for you to click on one of them and then figure out where the web page is located, it's going to do that in advance. So you click on it and it should be able to quickly access that server and download the new page. Next we have more support for HTML5 tags. So this is the next version of HTML that includes special tags for things like video, audio, geolocation, stuff like that. This will enable web developers to create even richer web applications and Safari 5 supports a lot of this stuff right now. Now there are also some enhancements to how the address bar works at the top of Safari. So for instance, in the past you could start typing a URL and it will try to auto-complete it. So for instance, let's say we want to go to the MacMost article on online password security. I can start typing it and I can see that it gives me some choices below in my history. I could actually arrow down to the article I want or I can continue typing and it will narrow it down. So as soon as I type that O, for instance, it knows that the only thing in its history is the online password security.html article. And you also notice that to the right it gives me the title, Guide to Online Password Security. Now I could start over again and instead of typing the URL, I could actually type the title of the page. So if I start typing online password security, you can see there it actually will do the opposite. It will put the title here to the left and it will put the URL to the right. And I can hit return here even though all I've typed is part of the title and not part of the URL and it will take me right to that article. Now while I'm at this page I can demonstrate perhaps the most controversial feature of Safari 5 and that's the Safari Reader. So I'm here at this page. It's a blog post here with a long article. And right here where I usually would see the RSS button, instead I see a reader button. I press it and this is what I get. I get this special page in the middle and you can still see the regular page in the background here. This page just puts the text in the title and the images in the body of the article and puts them in larger text so I can read them easily. This is called Safari Reader and it basically allows you to center in on just the text of an article and read it in easier format without all the rest of the stuff, the navigation bars, the sidebars, or the ads on the rest of the web page. So this is controversial because it's displaying the content of the page in a way that the content creator did not intend. The content creator designed a web page with sidebar navigation, perhaps comments, and none of that will be visible when you hit that reader button. And of course the advertisements won't be there either. And this is a problem because a lot of those sites like MacMost.com pay the bills with those ads. So if enough people start using Safari Reader then ad revenue will drop and some of this content will just go away. Now Apple's making a big deal that they've now included Bing as a search engine in Safari. You could always have gone to Bing.com and done a search but now it's included in the drop down list here as one of the search engines you can choose and you can also go to your Safari preferences under general and set your default search engine to Bing. And last but not least we've got extensions. This allows developers to create toolbars and similar things that extend Safari. Now this is all just very new and there's a Safari extensions developer program open already for developers. But there won't be a gallery of extensions set up until later this summer. So for now it'll probably be a lot of developers creating extensions and later this summer we'll finally get to see some of them and use them. Hope you like this quick look at Safari 5. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.